Hiya. Um, welcome to what is quite an unexpected Thursday show. We weren't planning one, but here we are. We weren't planning a lockdown either. So this is episode 21 and it is the 20th of December. So um, I think you'll all understand why it's an unexpected Thursday show and why we're here to chat to you guys tonight. We've spent the last sort of 24 hours as a group discussing how we can continue supporting our local community and how we can continue to support one another over the next month or three weeks. And so we thought we would just do a quick video to let you guys know what we've come up with. Um, it's all been a bit rough and ready, but hey, that's the story of our lives, isn't it? <laughs> um, Joan, if you could give us a quick rundown of the conversations you've been having in the last 24 hours and keep us all up to date. So um, I'm actually, and Raven has decided to get in on the act, obviously, because she became a star when I spoke about Christmas meals. Um, but yeah, so over the past 24 hours, we have felt the same way as most of the rest of you will be feeling, um, a bit angry, a bit in shock, um, a bit sad, um, a bit disappointed, um, any and all of those emotions, um, anxious about Christmas, anxious about the three weeks that are to come after Christmas, um, anxious about the news um, and I think the first thing to say is if you are feeling like that if you are feeling any one of those emotions if you are feeling all of those emotions all at once it's okay to be feeling like that 2020 has been really rough this is what feels like the final cherry on top of it all um, but by supporting each other by remembering the hands face space um, by being careful and things like that we will get through it um, and there will be a better 2021 around the corner, somewhere along the line. <laughs> Might not be January, but it'll come somewhere along the line. So that's the first thing to point out. The second thing is that we are still here um, for community support if needed. Um, we've been, and actually in a way, the community support has been, um, this has been quite timely because we've actually been speaking to a lot of the people that we were engaged with who are vulnerable. Um, and getting them booked in for Christmas meals and things like that over the over this week. So, and as we're going to be phoning around, sort of giving them times for for dinners and things like that, we'll be able to kind of gauge the level of support that might be needed. And um, we do still have volunteers. If you volunteered with us previously, you will be getting an email from me, um, either tonight or tomorrow, just to see what your availability might be over the next three weeks, um, and if you are available to help. Um, but we don't know how much help might be needed. A lot of people are much more independent than when we were when we did this the first time round. So we just have to kind of just see how it goes, really. Yeah, it, the hope is, I guess, that although it is level four lockdown approaching, many of our community members that we have supported in the past have been doing their own shopping independently for a little while now. So we hope that they feel confident enough to be able to continue to do that. But it's important to highlight that the service is still available if, if anybody needs our support. And sometimes you just need a phone number to phone and hear a friendly voice and that's okay too. So um, yeah, we're still here. You can email us, you can drop us a PM and all, the, all that kind of stuff. We're going nowhere, literally nowhere. So get in touch um, mm -hmm. and it, would be nice to hear from people yeah. um even, even if it's just for that little bit of reassurance um you know anything really folk, folk can give us a phone on 01847 86 7050 and um, there's also the highland council line which we can't quite remember the number of but we will pop into the post as well um i think particularly you might be a family member of a mum or a dad who is here in Thurzo and you might be watching this um, and you're not able to get to mum or dad for Christmas and through January. So we're also quite happy to offer you any form of reassurance that you need as well. We've spoken to a few people in the past week who've been booking in their relatives for Christmas meals and that's the kind of case that they're finding themselves in that they can't get here this Christmas. Um, so yeah, any form of reassurance or advice that we're here for as well. Don't be scared to pick up the phone. 
And that kind of leads us on nicely on to Christmas meals. So we've been promoting over the last few weeks Christmas meals. We normally would run a community Christmas where we encourage people to get together and share a Christmas meal as a community. Obviously this year that had changed to home delivery service um, and some meal boxes that we were delivering to families as well. So we have been working on that regardless and we are very, very nearly at capacity with bookings for that service. Um, but Joan, if you could just give us a roundup if anybody is finding themselves that they might need a service like that, is it still possible and how do they get in touch about it? So yes, it is still possible. We are most definitely very, very nearly at capacity. At the moment, we have got 85 meals booked in. Um, so that's a significant number of deliveries. Um, it's quite logistically challenging. You know, if you've cooked Christmas dinner for all of your family at home, cooking for 10 people is a challenge. Cooking for 85 people is also a challenge. Um, you know, we've got, we've only got so much space in cookers and things like that. It's not a food issue. It is the amount of space that we have. We also have to operate and um, dishing up the meals and cooking the meals with a limited number of people due to social distancing. So we are very much nearly at capacity, but it is Christmas and we wouldn't want to turn anybody away. And we would try and find solutions for anybody who gets in contact with us. Um, and again, to book a Christmas meal, it would be to give us a call on 01847 867050. Um, but we would like absolutely kind of say that you really do need to be contacting us tomorrow, Tuesday at the latest um, to get those meals booked in and yeah because we're, we really have been inundated we normally do a Christmas meal for about 40 to 50 people so we're already doing significantly more than we would normally do yeah so that I guess that's over double what we would normally do in uh in-house environment as well so trying to deliver 85 meals and it's all volunteer drivers it, yeah so it's not, as Joan says, it's not a food issue. It's just a logistical nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> but that such is life. It's what we've got. It's what we're doing. Um, while I'm on the case of Christmas, I wanted to bring up that we have made the rota for the shearing shed. So the shearing shed is underneath the archway at Thursday Youth Club. It's a silver shed and it is topped up with food and toiletries and hand sanitizer. Uh, we are not taking any additional days off over Christmas, so it will be open six days a week. So only closes on a Sunday. So regardless of that, it's Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, all those days that you might think, oh, I'm not sure if it's open. If it's, so long as it's not a Sunday, it will be open and you will be able to help yourselves to anything that you need. Is there anything else I need to mention on Sharing Shed, Joan? Um, well, not quite Sharing Shed, but kind of Sharing Shed. So Christmas boxes, we are still doing Christmas boxes, but they do have to be booked in by the 22nd and absolutely no later than the 22nd because they're going out on the 23rd. So the Christmas boxes, as we, re we realised quite early on that we would have quite, a, we would maybe have an increase in number of people for meals, which we do. Um, <clears throat> but so we can't really offer a Christmas Day meal to families because if you, you've got four people there um, and that would take away from maybe somebody who was on their own, you know, that we could cover four households within that for people who are on their own. Um, so the Christmas boxes are the ingredients to cook your Christmas meal. Um, they're there for families who are struggling. So generally who are in receipt of benefits or who may have been furloughed or are having some form of financial difficulty. Um, again, we are just about at capacity for the boxes as well. Um, but we would try and arrange something, but they really do need to be booked in, and to, booked in by the 22nd because they're being delivered on the 23rd. Um, there is, as Marion's spoken about, the sharing shed for out with that time. We will be trying to put some kind of Christmassy things into the sharing shed um, once we've done the boxes and some kind of extra nicer kind of things. Um, but yeah, if you are in need of a Christmas box, please get in contact with us before the 22nd. And just a question that's popped into my mind, John, those meal boxes, are they available free of charge or is there a charge associated? They are free of charge. 
And we've still got a Just Giving page open, don't we? We've had loads of lovely, lovely donations all through the year. This has been an insane year for donations. So although we've been supporting people in need, the generosity of the local people of Thurso has been really overwhelming at times. And you just think, what on earth are we going to do with all these donations? Which I've volunteered for a long time and that is a problem I have never had. <laughs> so just, I guess, another thank you to everybody who's donated and anybody who's watching this and thinking they're inspired to maybe donate to us. We do still have a Just Giving open, don't we, Joan? Yeah, the Just Giving is still open. So we'll put the link in the post because um, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Um, we've had some... So, uh, significant donations. Cavendish Nuclear have made a significant donation to us running the Shearing Shed over Christmas time, um, which has been very gratefully received. Um, and yeah, there's been a lot of donations that have been received for it, but all will go to good use and support in the community at Christmas this year and at Christmas, Christmas in the, in the future as well. And for the Shearing Shed as well. I think the Shearing Shed has proven to be something which has been really important. Um, we've got a lot of people in the community who have never had to kind of seek any form of help before like that. Um, and it really is helping a lot of them out um, as they wait for kind of claims to be processed and things like that as well. So, yeah. I guess there's just one last thing that's on my mind about donations. And if anybody does feel inspired to donate, the sharing shed in its longevity, when we get going with it properly and there's not a global pandemic, will encourage people to drop off donations and do exactly what it's called, share. So you might drop off a packet of yogurts that you opened one and you didn't like it. So you put the other three in the sharing shed and then you might decide, oh, I'm needing carrots for the dinner and take some carrots home. That's the idea behind this project. But at the moment, we, for safety reasons, for hygiene reasons, for all these things, we cannot accept food donations to the sharing shed. But we promise we have plenty. We are we are being well stocked up by the charity Sea Fine. Um, so as much I don't want anyone to think it sounds cheeky, but donations of a financial variety are the best at the moment because we can keep that money ring fenced for whatever project and use it when the time comes. Um, that is just the easiest and safest way for us at the moment. Would you agree, Joan? Have I said the right thing? Yeah, no, no, completely agree. Completely agree. We get a large stock of food from Sea Fine. We got two pallets of food um, in mid December. We are booked in for another delivery from Sea Fine in early January. Um, and we also we do take surplus from Tesco's as well via Fair Share. Um, so yeah, we have got more than enough food to keep on stocking up the sharing shed. Um, and eventually, yeah, I mean, it's meant to be, the sharing shed is all about surplus food and it's reducing food waste, but it is just kind of difficult because of the circumstances at the moment to take donations of food. Um, so yeah, if you could make a financial donation instead, that would be very, very gratefully received. Um, we do on occasions purchase additional things because like, it's surplus food that we get. So um, like we don't always get toiletries and things like that. So we do on occasions pur purchase bits and pieces that go into the shed. Um, but that makes it easier for us at the moment. So I think that's everything we wanted to cover tonight. So I guess all that there is to say is have a lovely Christmas in whatever format you are celebrating, whether you're on FaceTime, Zoom, you know, let's just try to remember this is one Christmas we can still make it special. Um, we can still make it special for the kids, for anybody, the whole family. And if we keep our guard up and keep ourselves safe, we will get through this. And hopefully 2021 will be a lot better.